Assembly Member Prince. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I've got a series of questions, mainly for um, the Commissioner Andy Byford. Um, good morning, Andy. Um, as you said earlier, um, you took over as Commissioner during lockdown, not at the beginning. Um, were there any processes in place that you changed straight away on your arrival? Um, no, I think generally, in terms of you, obviously, in the context of COVID, um, I felt that we had a good handle on pretty much everything. So uh, the main uh, issue I wanted to focus on was to, to drive three key priorities, um, uh, all COVID related, to rebuild the finances. So get straight stuck into dealing with government to negotiate fair um, and affordable uh, emergency funding to rebuild the ridership. So we appointed a, a recovery director to um, to put together a compelling plan with uh, the GLA and also or the mayor's office and also with uh, central London businesses to get ridership back, but also to rebuild the morale and the organization, uh, organizational capability. That was, they were my three uh, main COVID related priorities. Thank you, thank you. Um, so how differently do you think you are doing your job now? Um, compared to the way your predecessor did it? Uh, well, I, I, I think largely I'm uh, continuing the good work that my predecessor, Mike Brown, did. I mean, Mike um, very ably took uh, TFL into the early stages of COVID and, and took very quick and decisive action um, and also uh, negotiated the first of those funding deals, the H1 funding deal. So I picked up the baton from there. Uh, we've negotiated both the H2 funding settlement, a, a, an emergency um, a temporary funding deal, and then the most recent one that takes us through to December. So by and large, um, it was uh, continuous uh, work, it was continuous effort. There's no be been no real big departure from what Mike did, uh, but certainly I'm very focused on uh, those three streams that I just outlined and described to you. Thank you. Um, appreciate that you weren't in post when the decision was taken, but do you know when the decision was taken to end TfL's physical inspection of bus garages? Uh, it was fairly shortly after the uh, beginning of the crisis, and that was because uh, it was um, in line with the very clear dis uh, uh, direction we have from Public Health England that you should restrict um, its social interaction as best as you could. So um, uh, inspections were pared back precisely because we did not want to put too many people into depots and thereby exacerbate, exacerbate the um, potential for cross-infection uh, amongst employees. Thank you. So, um, do you recognise that that was probably a mistake, though? No, I think that we, uh, when we have given you answers on this before, we, it's important that we understood what was going on in Depot, so we were still in contact with uh, individual uh, bus operators to make, to make sure that people had proper conditions, safe. Um, mess facilities, that there was, proper, there was proper social distancing contained within uh, depots, one-way systems, segregated uh, areas where that, that made sense. Um, and we have progressively now uh, been able to reinstate those physical visits. I've done some of them myself. Yeah. So do you agree, though, that um, had these physical uh, inspections been in place, that uh, it would have been easier to identify any substandard or COVID insecure conditions at bus garages? Well, I think it's always easier if you are actually there. I mean, that, that's kind of a, a, a no-brainer. It stands to reason. But um, the reason that we did not do those physical inspections for the very earliest part of the, uh, end of the pandemic was because the overwhelming advice to us from public health professionals was that we should limit the interaction of people at uh, bus depots, so no, uh, no unnecessary um, in, uh, additional uh, people. So uh, that's not to say we were passive to it. We still talked to the bus operators. We still gave them guidance on what they needed to do, such as maintaining one-way systems or uh, uh, much greater spacing in uh, canteens, for example. Uh, but we followed guidance in pairing back the number of people physically going to locations. Yeah. Okay, but do you accept? Um or agree with the belief of many people, especially bus drivers, that there would or could have been fewer cases of COVID and even possibly even fewer deaths had these inspections been maintained? Um, I don't think it's easy to, to make that assertion. I don't think you can make a direct correlation. I think the overriding um, uh, 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 
uh, reason for the, the, the terrible impact upon bus drivers was the fact that um, the, the biggest single factor was when the lockdown came in, that plus the age profile and ethnic background uh, um, makeup of our bus driver population, without question, were fundamental factors. Um, you know, we, we've, uh, we've, we've looked at, at those factors. We've had the study, as you know, done by uh, academia to look at what more we could have done and what more we should do. And we've taken further steps to better protect our bus drivers because, um, you know, no one wanted those deaths. Uh, we grieve them. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's awful that that happened. Uh, but I don't think you can make a direct correlation between the um, temporary cessation of the visits and the deaths that ensued. Okay, so um, I just really need a yes or a no question to this. Um, if there were a third wave, do you, do you think that you would do diff things differently this time? Well, I think we know more about the, the nature of COVID than we did back then, yes. So, uh, but also the fact that we now have much better containment and much better um, uh, physical distancing within depots means we've got less to do going forward. Okay. Can I ask you, uh, Commissioner, how many times do you communicate with the mayor in during, let's say, during a week? How many times would you say that you communicate with the mayor during the course of a week? I meet formally with the mayor every two weeks, and that's via a video conference, obviously, while we're in the pandemic. Uh, but in, in, in between that, probably on a weekly basis, and, um, with the, and certainly with the deputy mayor, who's my direct boss, but I have regular dialogue with the mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, would you know that... Um, oh, sorry, that's, that's very fine, thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, could I ask a couple of questions of you very quickly, please? Um, when Mike Brown was the commissioner, how often did he communicate with you, and was that more or less frequently than Andy Brown does now? Andy Byford. Uh, Byford, sorry, yes. <laughs> Give you my mic to my Andy's mixed up. It's similar. So uh, Andy's uh, described the normal rhythm of communications, but clearly there's sometimes where if there's things happening, it could be on a daily basis, more than one time a day. Uh, and each morning I receive an email from Andy's team about what's happening on the network. Uh, if we're concerned about particular issues, it could be more than one time a day. So recently, during the bank holiday weekend, I think we are in regular contact because obviously doing the deal. Uh, yesterday was a board meeting. So I think the rhythm is, is as Andy describes, both with, with Mike Brown and with uh, Andy B. Okay, thank you. Um, we talked earlier about the decision to end physical inspections of bus garages. Uh, were you involved in that decision at all? Or was that purely a decision taken by your, uh, Andy's predecessor Mike Brown. So during that phase uh, I was speaking to Mike and his team on a daily basis often more than once a day uh, and Heidi as well. Uh, that had been an operational decision taken by uh, uh, TFL um, but I would have known about it in real time. I, I can't give you con the concise day I knew about it but because we were speaking so regularly it would have been odd for me not to know about it because of the rhythm of our contact. Okay thank you very much. Thank you.